Hello everyone and welcome to the next edition of Oboe Winfrey. Today's little chat is with Ida who plays the bassoon in the orchestra. Um, Katrina has asked me to make these videos a little bit shorter but unfortunately everybody has got so much to say so I do apologise that this one is still not shorter but I'm trying my best. Um, take care everyone, I hope you're all keeping really really safe and not going out unless you have to. All the best, bye bye. We're on recording, this is like a proper radio show here. <laughs> so Ida, how are you Hello. doing? How are you doing? I'm doing, yeah, going, going all, all right, thanks, yeah. Yeah. Hanging in there. Yeah, good. How um, about you? I'm okay, actually, thank you very much. I'm not minding this lockdown period. It's, uh, it's quite, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, finding myself quite productive and I'm getting plenty done. I'm making a lot of cake, though, let me tell you. Oh, my God. <laughs> The cake has got to stop. The cake has got to stop. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so, for everyone that doesn't know and is watching, Ida plays the bassoon and she plays the bassoon in the Irish Chamber Orchestra with us. And um, Ida is normally the second bassoon. And in the role of second bassoon, she has a very, very vital part to play in the wind section. Because often she's playing at the bottom of the harmony. So, Ida, what's, oh, just before we do that, what are all those books? Who knew that you read so many books? Uh, do I happen to be in front of a huge <laughs> I mean, um, are they actually your books or are they? No. no. Are you sure they're not your books? No, they're, 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 they're fake, actually. It's just, <laughs> it's just a cover. You, just, you could just take they're them all off them. Yeah, no, okay. they're, um, they're my husband's. He's reading the thousand one books to read before you die. Oh and my so gosh. So, okay. I think we have. 670 of them i think in the flat at the moment oh wow but and you're reading none of them i'm reading i'm reading a few but like no they're no yeah oh, I, do, I use I... them to balance my reads on and things like that over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. <laughs> but is, a, may, is that a better use for your for your very intellectual looking books <laughs> <laughs> um actually just while we're, we're thinking about intellectuals so Ida, you've got loads of brothers and sisters haven't you that are all like super clever and yeah what, and you're obviously you're obviously super clever too but how come you got into music how did that happen um well it was a choice between music or biomedical engineering were my two options when i left school and uh it was it was a really close call and mm -hmm. i just decided i'd go with music and see and yeah, as soon as I started music, that was it. There was no, there was no question of, of, of anything else after that. But uh, but it, it was a really uh, hard decision for me because I did, I did really like um, maths and things like that in school. So yeah, it was a tough call. Yeah. Okay. And was so you, did you make that decision before you went to college or? Yeah, just at the end of the summer or uh, in the summer after I did my leaving search. Okay. And um, so the summer I left school, I decided yeah, that was it. I just. just see about music and yeah, yeah. Amazing. from the first week it was that's, yeah that's, that's that's brilliant so you're you're originally from Cork aren't you yeah yeah so so what's this thing about Cork and music that like there's you know there's this like you know I don't know how you describe it like a Cork mafia in the ICO <laughs> mm. yeah, so tell me, yeah. How, how a very proud happen? Cork mafia yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly so tell me about that how did that or how did how, how come Cork is such a central music place in Ireland well, I think the uh, I started in the school of music when I was five doing could I. Mm -hmm. So you have to do um, a year of that before you can start an instrument. So you've already got, um, you know, you've all your, you know, you've all of that done and you know the basics of rhythm um, with ta, ti, ti and all of that. Um, yeah. So I think it just, it's, it's an excellent way of learning. The school is, it's just a fantastic school of music and mm -hmm. the teachers are brilliant. Um, and so, yeah, I started there when I was five. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's just going to produce an awful lot of musicians yeah. if it's that good, you know? Yeah, it sounds like an amazing kind of facility or, you know, thing to have, uh, that, mm. that children are able to learn music at that level so early on. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's a bit different from the UK with the, the music in, in the schools themselves. It's a bit different. So you, so a lot of um, kids will learn music outside of school. Um, but uh, yeah, so especially when I, when I was growing up, there wasn't, there wasn't that much music in my school. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was seen as a kind of a slightly separate thing. So in one way, it was, it was amazing that I got that quality of teaching. But on the other hand, it, mean, it meant that a lot of most girls in my, in my class didn't, did very, very little okay. music then. Yeah. So. yeah. And so is, is, that, is that why there's this kind of real connection between Cork musicians? Because you all went to that school. And so you were kind yeah. of, you know, that was kind of like your second family kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and especially if you were if you were from a school that that didn't have a, um, a very strong background in music, then uh, you know, I, like I I went to the school of music every every day after school, so I spent from you know four until eight or whatever there every day. So right, it, yeah. and nobody in school, you know, um, did that with me. So it, yeah, it really was like second family. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Right, so let, let's, can we go back to the second bassoon thing now? So second bassoon yes. in the ICO, playing at the bottom of lots of wind chords. What's that yep. like? What's that like? I mean, can I just tell everyone, for me, having Ida there playing second bassoon is just the best thing in the whole world. Because Ida, I have to sort of play in the middle a lot, playing second oboe. Mm. And if the second bassoon is really, well, out of tune or sharp, basically, it makes my job. <laughs> makes my job <laughs> there really... is no flat <laughs> <laughs> yeah not if you're playing second there is no flat but it makes my job really hard because i have to get lots of bottom notes to come out and if i have to play them sharp then it's really, really difficult. so but what's it like for you playing second pursuit uh, uh amazing it is uh very very juicy um, okay. I mean, what does that, so wait, wait. So what does that mean? Very juicy to, for a non to, to, for a non musician. How, how what, what does that mean? Like you've got orange next to you. Or something? <laughs> uh, it means it is very very satisfying when, especially actually when you're playing low down, which same as the oboe, low down on the bassoon is terrifying, very difficult, likely to go wrong. If it goes wrong, it's very very obvious. <laughs> um, so when you're doing something that's, you know, uh, has strong potential to draw attention to yourself in a bad way and it works and, and you can just feel that everyone is sitting on top of your chord, you know, yeah. like you are putting the, the root down and everyone can, you know, like, yeah, balance on top of it. It just, it's a very strong, um, I suppose, just enjoyment is just really really you get a buzz out of it also. okay yeah yeah and it, and it also it's kind of i suppose it's a, it's a really important role to play yeah. in the wind section because you're kind of like the, the foundations of it really yeah. yeah and like if a note doesn't come out if you're playing along and then a note suddenly stops on you which it isn't supposed to do then um i mean it's 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 pretty obvious, yeah. 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 And you'll, so, know, you'll know if the second bassoon has gone missing, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, in, in a way, you could kind of say that the second bassoon, maybe the second oboe, the second flute, the second clarinet, I mean, you could say it's all very well, those other people in the wind section playing these really lovely tunes, but without, without us all mm. there playing second, I mean, there'd be nothing. They would be nothing. 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 Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what we like to tell ourselves. Anyway. Yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. I think I think we'll leave that part of the um, chat exactly there. They just so that, so that they all know when they're watching, they would be. They know what we think of them. Yeah, they're nothing without us. <laughs> right. So I've had this idea that what I want to do with you, um, mm-hmm. so as well as obviously we go to Limerick and we to go to Dublin and we do. Uh, but as well, part of what is really lovely is actually being able to spend a little bit of time in Ireland and in, in Limerick and whatever, in Dublin. And um, so I've got a little game that I want to play and I want you to write down your three favourite things about playing in the ICO, apart from actually playing in the ICO. Um, okay. And then I'm going to write down what I think your three favourite things are. And, okay. then and then we'll just finish off by seeing if they match. Okay, okay, right. So, we have a moment 
silent here. Well, um, okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Your first one. What is it? Uh, hang on, am I, am I going first or are you going to yeah, guess? Yeah, no, you'll, you'll no, go I'm first. Going first. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell the truth. I'll, I'll, I'll. Okay, uh, my first thing uh, is about going to La Cucina. Yay, I got it! <laughs> <laughs> I got the first one, I got the first one. <laughs> Quickly tell everyone about La Cucina. <laughs> La Cucina is a restaurant that is down the road, and it's in Castle Troy, down the road from Castle Troy Park Hotel. Um, I have a strong um, preference for going there, obsession maybe. Um, I go there at least just, once just a day <laughs> when I'm there and every time I go I get uh, the same thing. I get um, either a bruschetta or a caprese salad to start with and then I get a penne arbiata as the main and it's the exact same every single time and if I do anything different the staff in there are just like whoa what's happening? <laughs> okay right so we all know that just also mostly um, when we go to Europe we stay in the, we all stay in the Castle Troy Hotel Castle Troy Park Hotel and yes. uh, they look after us so I mean it's like a total second home isn't it really yeah well actually that was so that was so I actually put down four things for that I that I like and the hotel the, ho the hotel and the staff and how welcome you feel and how it feels like a second home you know yeah so yeah. so the hotel got in there too but the, but i did cheat and i had four things down okay okay right okay well yeah so you right. got you got like a cheetah i got like a cheetah yeah i didn't get the castle troy but that was like an extra so what's your yes. number two number two number two is going to see everyone Ah, okay, right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not sure if it's allowed because I wasn't supposed to say about playing with the orchestra. So yeah. I'm saying not playing with people because obviously that's the number one thing. Um, but since since that's been kept separate, then um, getting to see everyone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's quite a bit. It is a really big part of it, isn't it? I mean. Yeah. Um, it's funny because we we're all really different, and uh, we all kind of interact socially very differently. Um, but um, I always so look forward to it. I'm just, it's incredible to be able to kind of think, oh, I'm going to work and actually to kind of get up in the morning and drive to Heathrow and get on a flight to Limerick and think, oh, I'm so excited to see everyone. Yeah. And it's so lovely. It's really good. Yeah. Well, I put, for you, I put your second thing would be running along the river. That's what I... Oh, well, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, my, that's my third thing. Is it? Is, is, is the river and the run, getting to run along it and getting to walk over to the ICO studio. The walk is so beautiful. So just the, the location. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was my, that was my third thing. That was your third thing. Okay. So I kind of nearly, I, I didn't do too yeah. much. Yeah. You know, it's like Mr. and Mrs. in the wind section kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what was guess. your third thing? Um, well, actually, I, to be honest, I couldn't think of three things. So I just put number three, La Cucina again. I was just because I was like, fair enough. I really do that. <laughs> when in doubt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, um, just for the sake of trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter, Katrina has told me that I need to keep them a bit shorter. So um, we'll leave it there. But thank you so much. It's really, really nice. To see. It's yeah. actually, I mean, what, what's been so lovely about doing these videos? It's just really nice to see everyone. It's just so yeah. Nice. It really is. Lovely. No, it really is. And Camille, just before I go, I want to say that I've, I've, I've been working on um, British Sign Language, so I'm going to say, good to see you. M-A-T-T-H-E-W. <laughs> that is amazing. Thanks so much, Ida. Take care. Thanks very much for the interview. Bye. Bye-bye.